Welcome to r slash Tales from Tech Support, where we get to have a little chuckle at the technologically disadvantaged, like me. I'm Uncle Reddit, and have I got a story for you. Welcome back to the channel, guys. A little bit of a late recording here. Uh, been working on my camper all day, trying to get ready for this weekend's camping trip. Of course, for you guys, this is Monday morning, at least on the east coast of the U.S. I'm recording this on Friday night, almost Saturday morning now. Yeah. Couldn't leave you guys without an episode, and uh, I'm just, I'd like to record this weekend while we're out camping, but I'm just not sure if I'll be able to, so yeah, might as well get it done now. Let's read some stories. Yes, it's in the Switch. This story is from my first ISP job. I worked with designing, building, and implementing solutions for business customers, LAN and WAN. This event took place during a very busy Friday afternoon. I get a call with a person on the other line who seems to be in a hurry to finish before he goes home. Unknown caller. Hey, I'm hooking up some new IP phones and I need you to allocate a new VLAN for them so I can get them to work. Me. Hey, who am I speaking to? Still unknown caller. I'm the networking engineer at company XXYY. Now, can you help me so I can go home? Caller identification process cleared. Me. It would be better if you placed an order through the order system. If it's one phone, I can help you test it out now. More than that, and I'll have to charge consulting time, as you know. XXYY. Yes, yes, it's one phone. Let's go. So I should mention, this company is a big one with a lot of offices that have somewhere between 2 and 10 switches managed by us per office. Me. Sure. Where are you at and where do you want to connect the phone? XXYY. I'm at the office. He says this as if I'm stupid for even asking. Again, roughly 15 offices available. The phone is in the switch. Me. Okay. I'll have to know at which office and what port and switch you're connected to. XXYY Well, I'm at ZZXX location, if that really matters. The switch says Cisco on it. I think I'm in port 35. Me. Okay. At this point, I just want this over and done with, so I don't question it. I check the switches in Meraki at the location and notice a new phone on one of the ports. Create a new VLAN and set it up for VOIP. XXYY Good, it works. Now we can do the rest. Me. Sorry, what? XXYY. Yeah, this one went fast. Let's get this done before the weekend. And that, my friends, is how I charged four hours of weekend consulting time for swapping a phone system for a customer who already had a functioning system. How these technical people get put into position of responsibility is beyond me. So that guy was snowing you the whole time. He knew he had more than one phone to deal with. And I guess he figured once he got you on the line and had you hooked that you weren't going to go anywhere. You could have, but you also got to charge extra time, so... Eh, I guess it worked out as long as you got to bill for the time. But they're so cute! A long time ago, I was on a contract job doing desktop support for a fairly big company. I got pretty familiar with the good users and the bad users, and I placed a lot of machines for new hires. We had a pretty normal spec desktop for 90% of the users, and then a workstation spec for power users. This was much more expensive, of course, and it required additional approval. So one day I placed a new desktop for a new hire. I could tell by the size and location of the cubicle that this was not a VIP, just a regular user. There were definite class lines. Higher ranks got nicer cubes. Higher ranks still got offices. The work order said they got the standard workstation, so that's what I delivered. Got it all set up, working fine. Closed the ticket and moved on with my life. A couple days later, I got a new ticket from a name I didn't recognize. User states they're a new hire and the machine performance is unacceptably slow, to the point that they're not able to do their work, and requesting the power user spec desktop. Based on the person's title, their work would have been using Word, Excel, and Outlook, and the standard machine was perfectly adequate for that workload, so something was definitely amiss. I contacted the user and they said that they were not even able to open a simple Excel file in a reasonable time. I figured there might be something wrong with the Excel file, so I asked them to mail it to me. When it showed up, I was able to open it on my own standard spec machine with no issues. Not the file then, something on the machine. I went to the user's desk. It was the same desk, and it was the same machine I mentioned earlier. The machine was running full tilt. The cooling fans were at full speed. I asked to sit and check out the machine, and it was immediately apparent that it was CPU bound. It had all the symptoms of a badly overworked machine. The only windows open were, as expected, office apps. But there were also a bunch of little animated sheep roaming around on the desktop. <laughs> Remember these? 
or rather the old 16-bit version of those, the user thought they were cute and so had run a bunch of instances of the e-sheep so they would have lots of them. I used the task mangler to kill all the sheep. The machine immediately returned to normal. The fans went back to idle and the machine was suddenly completely usable. Word, Excel, and Outlook all snappy and working just fine. I advised the user not to run the e-sheep anymore and that I would not be recommending her to get a power user machine. I don't remember them. Do you guys remember the e-sheep? I'm, you know, I mean, I went to the link that OP provided and saw the e-sheep picture, just like I showed you in that slide. And, uh, yeah, I have no idea. I don't remember them at all. I mean, I do remember Clippy and the little dog that you could switch to and things like that. Your little, your little Microsoft helpers. Looks like you're trying to type a letter. Well, no kidding. It's definitely not the file format. I built one of my AP clerks a flimsy little process to split vendor PDFs by invoice number and then use a couple of Excel sheets and some, and some auto ITLT glue to look up data and rename the files. It saved her about five hours of mindless tedium a week with about 45 minute investment from me. She'd been using it happily for about three months and then it quit working. What's odd is that it ran just fine on my PC, so I'm remoted into her PC looking around and she tries to help me, but she's just annoying me. Could this be caused by the server outage last week? No, this is hosted on a completely different machine than the server that was down, so they're not related. I notice there's a file in there named the same as the program I click on, but the extension is AU3. Maybe that's the problem. No, that's just the auto IT source code. It's always been there, you just haven't noticed it before. One of the Excel sheets says it's an Excel file and the other says it's an Excel 2007 file. Is that why it's not working? No, that's not the issue. One is a 2007 file because that's just how it comes out of the accounting system. Excel can open both files just fine. It's definitely not the file format. Well, after a couple hours of messing around with auto IT, which can be a little weird sometimes, I decided to convert the 2007 file to an Excel SX file. What do you know? It started working on her PC again. Ah, crap. Now I gotta endure a few months of her reminding me about the time she figured out a problem before me and how she should really listen to my advice in the future because she's a very intuitive person and can sense problems easily. Gonna be a long few months of biting my tongue. Whoops! Don't you hate it when they figure out the problem before you? <laughs> but it happens all the time, you know? I'm much older and generally a little wiser than my kids, but every so often they come up with an answer that I should have gotten but I didn't. Yeah, they like to rub it in a little and I can't blame them. I probably would too. I'm telling you, it's not there. So a user wanted a certain program installed. Let's call it Iguana Kit, purely because I was recommended an Iguana Sushi video before writing this for some reason. Me, I see the ticket. Ticket. I filed a request to have Iguana Kit installed on my computer and it's closed successfully, but I don't have it installed. I have Iguana Bits and I see the installer for Iguana Kit in the work folder, where we copy things to then use on their computers, but no Iguana Kit. Me. Meh, I'll just install it for him again. And done. Closes ticket. Ticket reopened. I still do not have Iguana Kit. I only see the installer in the work folder, but I do not have permission to run it. Me. Checks his computer. It's there. Its folder is simply called Kit in Program Files. Do not look for it in work. It won't be there. I close the ticket again. Ticket reopened. That's not what I need. I need Iguana Kit and I have no such thing. Me. Mm, program files. Kit. It's in there. I can see it right now. I close the ticket. Again. User then opens a direct chat to me. User. Hey, you were trying to help me with Iguana, but I still don't have it installed. Me. Mm. I renamed the Kit folder to Iguana Kit. Me. There. Better? User. Thanks, that's the one. I can understand the user being a little confused at first because the naming was different, but... Well, no, I can't because they were looking in the wrong place to begin with, but you explained it to him. You told him where to look. Well, you sort of told him where not to look. I don't know. I guess some people just need a little more detail than others. Where's my mic? Hello, all. Short tale from today. Actually, in the magical land of AV tech support. The players in this story are as follows. Me, self-explanatory. U1 is user 1. U2 is user 2. P is presenter. To set the stage, I am on-site support for a large office building's AV systems. My day-to-day -day is mostly tier 1 stuff, however I'm a former engineer and programmer so more technical questions and issues end up in my lap. 
Monday, I receive an email from user1. The email is pretty straightforward. They pretty bluntly state, On Thursday, we will need a handheld microphone in X conference room. My response was pretty short and straight to the point. User 1. Conference Room X does not support the use of lavalier or handheld wireless microphones for local voice lift. The room can only utilize its currently installed ceiling microphone for conferencing. I receive a generic, Okay, me, thanks for the clarification, in response from User 1. Fast forward to today. User 2 pings me and requests I come to Conference Room X to help get the meeting connected. I arrive and the conversation is as follows. Me. Okay, you're connected and all set up. User 2. Where's the microphone? Me, uh, in the ceiling? User 2, my colleague emailed asking for a handheld mic to be provided. She said you would be bringing one. Me, no, I pretty clearly stated in my email to her that it wasn't possible to set that up in this room. User 2, well, somebody said they would be bringing me a microphone. The presenter approaches. Presenter, in a very raspy voice, did you bring the mic? Me. No, I was very clear that we wouldn't be providing one for this meeting. The room isn't set up for it and can't be on short notice. Presenter. Well, I have laryngitis. How's anyone going to hear me? You have to do something about this. Me. I'll be right back. Immediately excused myself, went back to my office, and closed myself inside. I'm currently debating if I report user 1 and user 2 and presenter to their supervisor for violation of COVID and sick leave protocol. The ironic part is, being a hybrid meeting, the best solution would have been for P to stay home and present remotely using her headset with built-in mic. Yeah, I'm kind of torn on this one. I mean, I guess after the last couple of years of dealing with the crud, um, you know, I get protocols being in place. Also, from before that, when I worked for the uh, local board of education, I also understand sick protocols. You know, you come to work sick, you're trying to be dedicated and work, and plus, you know, who wants to miss that day's pay? But at the same time, you know, you're coming into a building with, you know, several hundred up to a couple thousand people, depending on your location, and you run a real risk of contaminating, like, everybody in your path. So, yeah. Well, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed these stories, and if you did, do me a favor. Would you consider giving this video a like? Maybe subscribe to the channel, and click that little bell icon so you don't miss the fact out with the beer telling you stories next time. See ya!